Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today I am here with a keyboard. This is a Havit keyboard and this is a 89 key mechanical keyboard that they sell. And I bought this off of Amazon for really one big reason, and you'll see immediately if you haven't looked at the thumbnail already. When I first was interested in the keyboard, the price was a little high, put it on my wish list, and lo and behold, a few days later, it had dropped significantly. So I figured, hey, now it's at a price where I will definitely buy it for the reasons that I want to buy it. The box, unfortunately, was damaged because I had to remove a shipping label that was placed right on top, but that's okay. What we care about is right in here. Now, a lot of people that uh, left reviews for this on Amazon were polarized by it. A lot of people didn't necessarily like uh, the look or the feel of it. Um, I, on the other hand, am not really miffed by it. I like the aesthetic of the retro style terminals from the, uh, you know, the 80s and the 90s. The keys are kind of concaved into the, the keyboard deck, so that should give a pretty ergonomic feeling uh, without too much difficulty. One of the unique things is what they did with the numpad is you can see that it's still here, but the normal six buttons that we would have clustered above the arrow keys are missing. That'll be interesting because while having the number keys here for data entry is gonna be really nice and having the enter button right there is good, I will have to get used to my shortcut keys if I'm doing any sorts of uh, maths or any kind of calculator stuff. Other than that, the keyboard does use essentially a red switch. They are not cherry red switches or any brand name, but I'm not really worried about that because if it works, it works. Other things to note are is it has uh, these extendable feet on the bottom if you really wanted to use those. So what I was going to do is just quickly do a typing test on this to get uh, a feel for it. And this is actually probably going to go to work with me because I want to confuse the people in my workplace. And I also really, really don't like the membrane keyboard that I have inherited, which has gathered so much dust, dirt, and grime underneath the keys that pressing them feels like extracting water from a sponge. So with that being said, I've got the X220 off to the side here. I'm going to do a quick test on that keyboard as a base measurement, and we'll see how well I can do with this uh, on the very first try. All right, so my score was uh, 369 CPM or 74 words per minute. Uh, not too bad, couple of mistakes in there, two out of the 71 words that I typed, um, but those were not counted in the corrected score. And yeah, I'll go ahead and plug this in and see how we do with that. All right, I've got everything set up, so let's go ahead and see how fast I can go on this board. All right, so that was 68 words per minute or a 342 CPM. So yeah, a little slower. One thing I noticed immediately is uh, just the switches are lighter than what I'm used to generally. I've got browns on my editing PC. Reds are a bit of a different feel. Obviously they don't provide anywhere near as much resistance as the ones on a ThinkPad. The concave keys are something I'll also have to get used to, but not in a bad way. It just means that some key presses end up being a little deeper and others uh, a little bit less so. And I think I'm used to compensating for that and I'm not getting that obviously on this keyboard. However, I just absolutely love the aesthetic of this thing. It 
tickles my reptilian brain in a way that few others do. At any rate, I think that if you can get this for, I would say, around like the 50, 60 Canadian dollar mark and you love the aesthetic like I do of these black, orange, and off-white keys, you know what? Go for it. There's a lot of value here. You got good switches, you got good keycaps. Build design seems to be decent enough and it's a great conversation piece. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I get to feature a keyboard like this, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.